that he would defeat Minter in the September fight? Well, I'm keeping a neutral head about the whole thing because I would love to bring uh, Vito Antifomio back here to Vegas where it all began for me and uh, put an end to it right here in Vegas with uh, Vito Antifomio and for the championship of the world. That would be a more satisfying win over Antifermo than Minter. Sure. Well, it has more meaning to it, you know, than what it would be with Minter. But uh, still, they have something that I want, and that's the uh, middleweight championship. Well, since November, Marvin's been patient, sort of. He's also been busy. He's had two impressive wins. Yes, he has. He knocked out Luce Heath Hamani in two rounds. Hamani was undefeated and highly regarded. Then he went in the ring against Bobby Watts, who had previously defeated him. He got rid of him in two rounds. I think he's just going to stay mad until he gets Antifermo in the ring again. Well, we were in Portland, Maine in February when he fought Lucif Amani, undefeated at the time and a very well-regarded fighter from Paris, France. And really, it was a brief encounter because by the second round, Marvin Hagler had done his thing, putting the Frenchman away, and it turned into a very easy win for him. A knockout of Bobby Watts last month followed, and now Mexican champion Marco Seraldo, a confident KG boxer who says he isn't afraid of Hagler. Marvin feeds on that kind of an attitude. Here's what he had to say. Well, this is good for me because I love a man when they talk like that. It gives me more meaning of really getting in there and really tearing his head off. Uh, uh, it, you know, it's like where you have to really psych yourself up, build yourself up for a fight, anything like this. This helps me to motivate me quicker than it would be for me just really sitting in the, in the hotel room or something like that, psyching myself up. When a man talks, it makes me really just want to hurry up and drill right into him. Geraldo's most impressive performance was in a losing cause, going 10 rounds with Sugar Ray Leonard, fighting over the weight in May of 1979. Well, in that fight, he proved that he's a busy fighter. He really moves those hands, and more importantly, he proved, proved he can take a heck of a punch. Because Leonard nailed him three or four times right on the button, and absolutely nothing happened. Well, how does Geraldo view this fight? We talked with him earlier. He shows no fear of hard-punching Marvin Hagler. Here's what he had to say about his, impotent in the, his opponent in this big match today. He's going to do the impossible and try and win this fight so that uh, uh, he can get himself in position to uh, go for the uh, world championship. And it's a risk that uh, he feels he just must run. He will have to adjust his style depending on uh, uh, how uh, Hagra fights. And uh, if Hagra does a lot of infighting, he will have to do the same thing. He's confident, he's cocky, Gil, and he shows that in the ring. He looks like he has a great presence in there. What's going to happen? Well, I think the first two rounds are the key. If Geraldo can figure out that southpaw style, we're in for a heck of a fight. All right, it's number one against number five coming up here at the Sports Pavilion. Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll be back with the first round of this 10-round middleweight fight in a moment. Goes Geraldo. Well, we are ready for this middleweight action. Both Hagler and Geraldo weighed in at 160 pounds. You're looking at Marco Geraldo, a record of 43 and 13 with 24 knockouts, according to Ring Magazine. Marvin Hagler is 48, 2 and 2. He avenged both of those defeats. Geraldo, 13 losses. Yes, many of them came early in his career. And as Gil Clancy pointed out, he is on a streak. Ten consecutive victories. They are both 27 years of age. Hagler living in Brockton, Massachusetts. Marco Serraldo in Mexico City. Here in Nevada, judging is by three judges at ringside. They are Art Lurie, Dwayne Ford, and Charles Minker. The referee is Carlos Padilla, who lives here in Las Vegas. The scoring is on the 10-point must system. Nine points or less to the loser of a round. There can be a 10-10 draw. The mandatory eight count. Three knockdown rule in Nevada, and the count continues after the bell if a fighter is down, except in the final round. This is an 18-foot ring at the Sports Pavilion, and we're ready to go with first-round action. Hagler in the red trunk circling to the left. Geraldo in the white trunks now at the bottom of your screen. Hagler coming off two quick knockout victories over Lucie Famani and Bobby Boogaloo Watts since his controversial draw to Vito Antifermo in this very same ring last November. Gil Clancy, uh, we watched uh, Geraldo on that same card of the Hagler Hominy fight in Portland, Maine. And he sends Geraldo down to the canvas. Uh, no knockdown, Tim. No, no knockdown. knockdown. Got about a half a punch in as Geraldo pulled back and lost his balance. Started to say Geraldo with a 10-round TKO over Johnny Le Cicero at Portland, Maine. And 
He showed an awful lot of skills and a lot of experience in that fight. Yes, he did. A very, very relaxed fighter. Made the other fella miss and hit him with everything but the kitchen sink. Good counter puncher. Good on his feet. Hagler counter punching. Got a straight right hand. Now he throws that right hand jab. Hagler's right hand jab, it's about as hard as anybody else's straight right hand. He can really punch with that right hand. That's well, what he hurt Hamani with to put him away. I was just going to say that. We saw that in our pre-fight setup. The one that started Amani right through the ropes. Hagler just missed with a right hook. Gets that right hand in. Quick jab. Hagler, he can really throw him fast. Not only quick, but it's tough. It's hard. Geraldo looked very, very relaxed in his corner before the fight, maybe too relaxed. He was sitting down while they were introducing him. I don't like that. I like a fighter to go in there when he's really hot and ready to go. Sugar Ray Leonard said that uh, Geraldo gave him his toughest fight. Leonard's young career also said he was the hardest puncher they had faced. Of course, Sugar Ray was fighting over the weight up in the middleweight division for that fight. But uh, nonetheless, uh, that's some tribute to Geraldo. Less than a minute to go, round one. Marco Serralo, very regal presence in the ring. He's tall. There's a certain look about him that displays confidence. Less than 30 seconds to go, round one. Geraldo born in Guaymas, province of Sonora, Mexico. Rank number five by the WBA, number eight by the WBC. When it comes to fighting rust, there are two times. Well, Sunday at two, the CBS Sports Spectacular, highlights of the Mr. Olympia contest. Also, you'll see action from the World Team Speedway Championships. It'll be a great afternoon on the Sports Spectacular. There's that slip. Saw that uh, Hagler landed a punch, but it really wasn't enough to send him to the canvas. Geraldo trying to back off the punch, slipped and lost his balance, so no knockdown scored. And we're in round number two, and I must apologize for the sound of my voice today, still battling a cold, and uh, hope that you'll bear with us through the action, which we expect plenty of. Hagler and Geraldo, round two. Tim, boxing is southpaw, it becomes mind over matter. You have to make the southpaw move the way you want him to move. Uh, Marco Serraldo should be moving to his left, and which he's doing right now. That means the other fellow has to pick up his foot before he can land those big punches. If he keeps moving this way, we're gonna have a 10-round fight. And that's some prediction to make with a punch like uh, Hagler can get you out of there any time. Marvin Hagler, 40 knockouts and 48 victories. Oh, a good sharp left hook from Hagler. Good counter from Geraldo. Now Hagler's trying to move over and get the fellow in front of him. He's trying to make Geraldo move his in his direction. Left hand landed, but Geraldo was backing away, went to the ropes. Geraldo does that quite often with punches. He takes the sting out of him because he just seems to move back with the punch. Takes that, it cushions the punch. There's some of that movement and a little of the bravado from Marco Serraldo. And he's flurrying. And he's fighting Hagler's fight, toe to toe. Less than a minute to go, round two. As usual, a good Mexican contingent on hand here in Las Vegas. And of course, uh, they're supporting Marco Serraldo, the Mexican champion. Marvin Hagler from Brockton, Massachusetts. Thinks of himself as the uncrowned champion, perhaps with some justification. A right hook landed. Tim, he cushioned the punch a little bit. He rolled with it. 
Wasn't as good a punch as it seemed to be. That's some 30 seconds to go in round two. Hagler going to the body, and there's some of that macho from well, the, ma the macho was he thought that Hagler hit him low with both those punches. They were both borderline punches. That was a silent protest, Tim. Final seconds of round number two. Super Automotive Values from Sears. Now get the Sears... Live middleweight action, round three from Las Vegas, Nevada. Bald-headed Marvin Hagler against Mexican champion Marcos Serraldo. And Hagler knows already that he's in against a good opponent. Serraldo seems to set his own face. He makes up his mind to move for a while, then all of a sudden he'll, he'll take a deep breath and make up his mind to fight for a while. He fights when he feels like fighting. Smart fighter, Tim. Marco Geraldo, handled by Lupe Sanchez, his manager and trainer. Francisco Sanchez, Frank Williams in the corner with him. Goody Petronelli, Pat Petronelli, handled Marvin Hegler. Luke Capilato, there's second. There's that big right hook of Marvin's. His corner wanted him to hook some more. Well, that's his most effective punch, Tim. He could knock your head off with that right hook if he catches you with it. He's having trouble figuring, figuring Geraldo out. Well. We thought uh, that it'd be the other way around, being that he's a southpaw, but you can see he's actually puzzled in there, Marvin. He's trying different things. Nothing seems to work. He will switch around occasionally. Do you think we may see that before the fight is out if he doesn't start to get something going well, here? If, if he doesn't start to get things his own way, I think he will switch around. I've seen him fight orthodox style, and he's just as effective, maybe even more effective. Right hand lead just raised Geraldo, a counterpunch very well. See that movement to the left, Tim? That takes that right hook right away from him. That's why he has mind over matter. You've got to continue to do that. And he just did it again. Geraldo <laughs> with a longer reach, taller than Hagler, and he's been using those two advantages. Thus far in this third round particularly. Less than a minute to go, round number three. Scheduled for 10. Two of the top middleweights in the world, live on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Oh. Heavyweight action on Sunday, May 25th. Jerry Cooney, his first big network appearance against the veteran Jimmy Young. Should be a great fight. You'll see it here on the Sports Spectacular. Sunday, Hag May 25th. Hagler landed a fl flagrantly low blow, but the referee was behind and didn't see it. He just snapped Toralo's head back with that right jab. One thing about being a puncher, the, the way Hagler is, one big punch can turn this fight or, or make it go all his way. Let's put it that way. He is the puncher of the two. You're in the end of round number three. Hagler unable to put any kind of consistent offense on the tricky Marco Seraldo. Nice race, fellas. Sports. Another big day of sports action on CBS tomorrow with a sports spectacular at 2 p.m. and then, of course, golf following. So stay with us all day tomorrow here on CBS. We're in the Marvin Hagler corner. We mentioned earlier, Tim, that Geraldo has a way of leaning back to get the sting out of those punches. They just told Hagler in his corner, get the guy against the ropes. That way he can le lean back. Let's see now if Hagler doesn't try to crowd him and move him into the ropes. That round, was his instructions. Round number four, scheduled for 10. There's no question that Hagler has had his problem solving Marco Geraldo through the first three rounds. We've got the fight dead even at this point. I don't think anybody would really argue that. Neither fighter has been able to dominate. Fourth round action. The winner with a title shot against the winner of the Minter and a Fermo Middleweight Championship fight coming up in June next month. You, know, you mentioned earlier that Geraldo has a regal look in the ring. One thing, he doesn't seem to have any respect for Hagler at all. He has confidence in himself, Tim. Sure does. That was evident in the pre-fight interviews with him. It's his style in the ring, and he's shown it since the fight began. Indeed, I think he's gathered even a little more as the fight has gone on. Open, open, open. 
Hagman's been landing some low blows, Tim. He just landed another low blow, and they're really low. I'm surprised that the referee hasn't warned them as yet. Carlos Padilla is the referee. He's from Las Vegas, Nevada, but living here the last couple of years. He's like a willow, Avalo. He just seems to lean away from punches, take the effectiveness away from them. Now he just turned south for. Hagner popping that jab, backing Geraldo up. Combination from Marco Geraldo, less than a minute to go round number four. Low, low blow by Geraldo, and he was warned. Geraldo has had 56 fights. Hagler has had 52. They are veterans each. Tim, unless Hagler lands a big, big punch in this fight, he's going to have his hands full right until that final bell. This is going to be a close, tough fight. Has to land the big one. None of those punches landed. And again, he missed. Coming to the end of round number four is Aralo prevent presenting uh, some great problems for Hagler. Lupe Sanchez talking to Marcos Geraldo in the Mexican champion's corner. He looks fresh, he looks confident, and he is making a most difficult fight for number one ranked Marvin Hagler. We are approaching the fifth round. Tim, there's so much involved in a fight like this. Marvin Hagler's been fighting for 10 years to become champion of the world. He had one fight, it was a draw. He didn't, he thought he was the champion, he didn't win it. Now he's in, in the next 18 or 20 minutes, his whole life can be changed if he blows a decision now in this fight with Geraldo. I mean, there's an awful lot of drama, an awful lot of tension here. Very close fight through four rounds. Certainly in the eyes of the three judges who do the scoring, it could tilt either way, it could be all even. Marco Serraldo, happy to get this opportunity here against the number one ranked fighter, and he's putting some pressure on. Hagler covered up well, however. Hagler is by far the better puncher. Geraldo, Geraldo is a busy fighter, but he's an arm puncher. He slaps. 24 knockouts and 43 victories for Geraldo. But not of the explosive, decisive variety. Now, finally, Hagler landed a punch that straightened up Geraldo and has got him going backwards, but now he plants and flurries back. Right hand landed there and a pretty good sample. He had a pretty good lick at Hagler, but didn't appear to phase him at all. No, I'm not impressed with Geraldo's punching power at all, Tim. You, you mentioned he had 24 knockouts, but it's who you knock out that counts. That's exactly right. We'd like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break at the end of this fifth round. Tim Ryan at Gil Clancy live ringside at the Sports Pavilion, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. A key middleweight fight. Oh, higher, higher, higher. Nice straight right hand by Geraldo. Hey, Hagler blink. Oh, that's two warnings this round for low blows. See if he takes a point away at the end of the round. Under a minute to go, round five. Jerry Cooney, Jimmy Young. A week from tomorrow here on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Up and coming. Heavyweight, everybody's talking about oh, yeah. Jerry Cooney. Jimmy Young, they say, has been training hard and the best shape that he's been in a long time. It's an opportunity to put himself back into the heavyweight limelight. Left hand from Hagler back. Geraldo into the Hagler corner. 
first infighting flurry we've seen him stand there toe to toe so far in the fight Hager able to duck under most of Geraldo's blows now he comes up from underneath and landed an uppercut we'll continue live from Las Vegas after this word from your local station This is CBS. We are halfway through this scheduled 10-rounder. Marvin Hagler, the number one ranked middleweight, number five ranked Marco Serralo on the right of your screen in white. He is the Mexican champion, and he has been impressive and difficult for the number one rated Hagler. Hagler just switched the round. Now now Hagler is fighting orthodox style. He changed. He's no longer a southpaw. We predicted that might happen. It's happened, Tim. Let's see if he's more effective this way. Gil Clancy with Tim Ryan ringside here at Now he's back Rebellion. being a southpaw again. The crowd came alive with that round ending flurry in round five. Tim, Hagler is switching back and forth now. Twice he switched around, left his southpaw stance. That means that he's being troubled by this guy. He's back, back at southpaw. We should watch this real close to see how many times or if he does switch around again. Morello has been picking his spots to go forward. He's been basically counterpunching through the first five rounds. It reminds me of like if a dog chases a cat into a corner, all of a sudden the cat has to fight and he finds out he can fight like heck. There it is now from Geraldo. He fights in flurries. He did that against La Cicero. Last fight we watched. Him in action. Hagler was talking to him, said, said it didn't hurt, but what it does is score points. Hagler banging into the body. Tim, before this fight, we mentioned that Lope Sanchez, who handles Geraldo, also handles Pepino Cuevas, the champion. And I know that he doesn't put a fighter in the ring unless he thinks he has a chance to win. And this kid certainly does have a chance to win today. Now Hagler's back fighting regular style. He's no longer a southpaw. And Geraldo switched for a second. This is a battle. It's really a strategic battle right now. And I think Geraldo is outthinking him, and Hagler, of course, has got the big punch. Now he's clever again. Two clever, experienced fighters it's in a chess match thus far. Less than 30 seconds to go round six. Must be frustrating for Hagler not to be able to get that bonded power and put it together on Geraldo. He's found him very difficult to hit. We're in the final seconds of the sixth round. Neither fighter has been in any trouble so far. If you're going to take a trip, remember you've got three things to fill up. You've got to fill your car with your family, and you've got to fill the tank with gas, and you've got to fill your tires with the proper amount of air. Because with the heavy load, tires need more air, or they might heat up and blow out. Yeah. Round number seven. Gil, how do you see this so far? Tim, the fight is up for grabs right now. I have it dead even. And you know, you may get a big, big difference in the scoring of the officials. Hagler's the aggressor, Geraldo's the tactician. Some judges like guys that walk forward all the time, other guys like fellas that make clever moves and counterpunch. So you have two different styles. Take your pick. Geraldo's been counterpunching primarily and fighting in flurries. Has he scored enough points to impress the judges? The 10-point must system here in Nevada. Three judges will do the scoring. The referee is not involved. Big day tomorrow on CBS. The Sports Spectacular at 2 o'clock. Then at 4 o'clock, the Colonial National Invitation Golf Tournament. Bruce Litsky, the current leader. Hagler has switched around again. And got nailed with a counterpunch. Got now nailed with that right hand. That's... Geraldo is like saying that. That'll teach you. Geraldo just showing disdain for the power punching of Hagler. Several times he has stood flat-footed there inviting Hagler to go at him and just waiting to counterpunch. He's able to maneuver Hagler right now anywhere he wants him, Tim. That's why he's been so effective. 
he's going Hagler's going to have to either catch him coming in or he's going to have to hit him with that big right hook hook leaping in because he's Geraldo right now is doing a tattoo job on him good round for Marco Geraldo Hagler still coming forward but just unable to get two or three punches in a row that do any damage and he's trying everything he's just switched around again Looks like a confused fighter, Tim. Geraldo didn't fall for that trap. Hagler went against the ropes as if they, okay, let's let's fight, let's throw some punches. All Geraldo did was walk away. Hagler with a couple of consecutive jabs, snapping Geraldo's head back. Less than a minute to go, round seven. Another good jab, but he pays for it. Morales counter punching well again. Right hand once again, and it looked like they bumped heads on that exchange. No touch, okay? Watch your head. Hack was the guy with the bald head. You know, they can really bust you up with those bald heads, and he's the guy that rubbed his head. <laughs> Under 30 seconds to go round seven. Good combination by Geraldo. Beautiful underneath and over, Tim. Watching Geraldo, you begin to think if he had power, he'd be awesome. Right, he's just an arm puncher, Tim, but he's landing. Final seconds of the seventh round. Marvin Hagler rated number one, Geraldo number five, and Hagler finishing strongly. If keeping up with your car is getting you down, fight back. CBS Sports. Gill in a close fight, round-ending flurries, I think, sometimes tend to influence judges. Hagler finished this last round very well. Here it is again. Only the last 20 seconds, Tim, for the first two minutes, it was all Geraldo. But they do remember those last flurries. So I'm, I would have to say that Hagler would get the round on the judges' scorecards. This is round number eight coming up. Marco Serralo doing a superb job against the number one ranked middleweight. Marvin Hagler from Brockton, Massachusetts. Hagler. Perhaps looking ahead for the second title shot. Got his hands full here today against Geraldo. Tim, in Geraldo's corner, he looked a little tired. When you get tired, that's when you're going to have to stand and fight. He's doing this may that turn now. into a brawl now. All the tactics may go out the window, and now it's going to be who outfights who, and the fight's on the line. So let's see who can outfight who. Hagler is really determined in this round, putting continual pressure now on Geraldo. Geraldo continues to counterpunch effectively. There's always a moment of truth in a fight, Tim. It's just about now it's going to take place. Eighth round scheduled for 10. Yeah, Geraldo's a little tired. Hagler <laughs> missing rather badly. Yeah, but showing a little frustration. Geraldo's lost a little steam, though, Tim. He didn't take advantage of it. He didn't count the punch. That's right. Hagler a little busier than Geraldo this round. Good left to the cheekbone of Geraldo. There's that moment of swoop we were talking about, Tim. Have to settle down and fight. Not much sting in Geraldo's punches in this eighth round. He does appear arm weary. Best punch of the fight for Hagler that left. A minute to go in round eight. Marvin very determined now, and Geraldo definitely in more of a retreat. Hagler going to the body, coming up top, throwing a lot of leather in this eighth round. Under 30 seconds to go. Right hand landed. Jabbing well 
well now. Marvin Hagler in a good round for him. We're in the final seconds of the eight. Hi. Yes. I'm like a weed eater brand trimmer. Now how about a lawn whopper? No. <laughs> This is round number nine. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live at ringside at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. And certainly, uh, if there is to be a turning point in the fight, as you pointed out during that eighth round, that was the time for Hagler, who finally uh, really started to put something together against Geraldo, appears to be tiring. For Geraldo to get back in the fight now, Tim, he, he, there's no more of this tactic business. Now he's going to have to fight around. He's going to have to take it back from Hagler. If he can't do it this round, the 10th round will be just academic. We still have it very close on our card, but Hagler just seems to have taken a lot out of Geraldo in that eighth round. So this is certainly the key round for the Mexican champion, and Hagler continues to press. Yeah, he's, got, he's getting three shots now because even when he misses, Geraldo doesn't count. It. He's tired. It's got to be the other way around for Geraldo to win. He's going to have to start taking chances. Hagler jabbing effectively. He has the last couple of rounds. A little loss of confidence in the eyes of Geraldo, it would appear to me. Hagler's jab is harder than Geraldo's right hand. More boxing action a week from tomorrow on the Sports Spectacular Heavyweight. Batting young Jerry Cooney against the veteran Jimmy Young. First big test for Cooney. Hagler. Geraldo pulled away from most of the impact and now Geraldo Furrier. He's got to know he's got to get busy here. Less than a minute to go in the ninth round. Right uppercut landed to the jaw. Hagler scores with a combination. And Geraldo waves him in saying it didn't hurt me, but he's landing now and continually. Under 30 to go in round nine. And that right jab has been a big punch for Hagler. Approaching the end of the ninth round, Marvin Hagler assuming command in this fight. Smooth on the extra hard shine of turtle extra carp. A close look at Marco Seraldo on our cards. We've given Hagler the last three rounds. He looks like a very tired fighter at this stage, Gil. Yeah, but Hagler, Hagler was tired at the end of the last round, too, Tim. I mean, they're two tired fighters. I think Geraldo's a little more tired. Well, the big thing is here is that Geraldo, who doesn't have great power when he's fresh, would not, I don't think, have the kind of power that could take Hagler out, and it looks like he's got to do that. That's that's right. Uh, they, they told Geraldo in his corner, you know, my great understanding is Spanish. They told him to get off first. Get off first. All Let's right, see well. if he does it. Your understanding of Spanish is uh, superior to mine, Gil. That's not saying a lot, Mike. Well, he's trying. He's trying. He's trying. He will try. Oh, he was wobbled by Hagler. But got his balance back. It looks like we'll have a slugfest here in this final round. Well, he came out trying, but then he got nailed. There's a foul. He grabbed the rope and used it for leverage. He got a warning from Carlos Padilla, the referee. Hagler's going to keep coming at him. Hagler can't be absolutely certain that he's got this fight on points. So he can't afford to just uh, laze around out there, and it looks like he's going to continue to throw punches. He's taking big shots at Geraldo now, though. Geraldo has to punch himself, and he has to keep punching. They're toe-to-toe -to -toe in the middle of the ring now, this final round. Right hand snapped Geraldo's head back. 
Kind of an uphill jab from Hagler That's against right. his taller opponent. As we pointed out before, his jab is much more powerful than Geraldo's right hand. Hagler is tired, as we pointed he, out, though, Tim. He's tired. He was not sent into the ropes with a punch. Some of the crowd here thought he was. He was off balance and weary. Just kind of fell back into the ropes. He's had to work hard against Marco Geraldo. Well, if he gets this decision, it's a great, good tighten him up for him for his championship fight, Tim. The other two fights were too easy. Boy, you're Some not kidding. This has been a great workout. He does not plan another fight before meeting the winner of Minerata Fermo, and that's assuming he gets a decision here. Ronaldo's teeing off now. He's trying, planting himself, trying to throw punches. Hasn't First time got anything fight. on it, though. And Hagler scoring inside. Ronaldo has not hurt his reputation in this fight against Marvin Hagler. Tim, he's rated number five in the world, and rightly so. I don't know too many middleweights that could beat Geraldo, to tell you the truth. Less than a minute to go in the fight. Hagler keeps coming forward. Geraldo doing what it can, but it does not appear that it'll be enough. Three judges may see this entirely differently. We'll allow for that, as always. Hagler scoring inside with a combination. Less than 30 seconds to go in the fight. Geraldo is weary. He's weary. He's tired, but he's never really been hurt by Marvin Hagler, the bomb thrower from Brockton. He's not been able to really put any punishment on Geraldo. He's put the wearying kind of punishment on, but nothing really spectacular. Final seconds of the fight. A lot of people are yelling, Geraldo, Geraldo. Well, he's got a lot of Mexican fans, and he put on a great show here. That's the end of the fight. And Marvin Hagler has had his hands full. The crowd comes to the Standing TV ovation, Tim. Standing the ovation. Great middleweight fight. We'll be back in a moment. A lot of you know me. I'm Bib, the Michelin Man, at Michelin. All right, we are back here at Caesar's Palace, and the announcer... Ladies and gentlemen, a decision. we have a unanimous decision. Judge Twain Ford scores 97-93. Judge Chuck Minker scores 97-95. And Judge Art Lowry scores 97-94. In favor of the winner by unanimous decision, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Well, there it is, Marvin Hagler winning a decision unanimously here Marco, Marco, against uh, the Mexican Marco, champion Marco, Marco. Marco Geraldo, who uh, certainly gave uh, more than a good accounting of himself against uh, against the number one rated Marvin Hagler. And uh, Marvin got himself more than he can bargain for here this afternoon as he was really in against a tester, and he's joining us here at ringside. We can get the hand mic. Here we do. Here we have it. And uh, all we got to do is get turned around here, Marvin. We've got the camera right behind you. And uh, Marvin, I, I got to believe that uh, you didn't expect as tough a fight as you got from Marco Zeraldo. Uh, well, no, really, I only had about a good nine days in the gym, you know, and uh, because I had a death in the family with everybody up there. But the next time that I fight him, I'll be in Ladies better shape because I should have put this man away. But I felt good. I'm glad that I fought a good 10-round fight hard for the championship because you need those kind of fights to get you ready for the championship. First of all, I'd like to thank God for the strength and the courage. Also, to say hi to my fiance, we'll be married in June, and my mother that couldn't make it follows me all over the world. All right, Mark. And my son in New Jersey. Thank Gil, you. Gil made that point that uh, you got your, you got yourself a good workout well, uh, loved it. with loved the it. Geraldo. Loved it. He's a good fighter. He see that I was very skilled too. Every time he would come with something, I would come right back. I showed him that I was made of a good championship. Those are the kind of fights that really proves what a championship is all about. Coming back in the last four rounds the way that I did. I felt real nice and strong, a little tired, but the next time that we fight, if we ever fight, I'll be in better condition. You want Vito rather than Minter, don't you? Doesn't make any, any difference. I'd like to bring Vito right back here to Vegas where we had that draw and finish him off right here. But Alan Minter, he's a champion, so that's the guy I got to go after. I want my belt that belongs to me. I've been training hard, running these long rows and everything. It's got to come to me. Sooner or later, it's got to come to okay, me. Okay, Marvin, congratulations on Thanks your victory lot, here today, and we'll be back here at Caesars Palace Thanks, in just a moment. Okay. 
You are one of the few guys in America that knows how to beat Marvin Hagler. How do you do it? Well, you got to back him up. You know, if you you can't let him come to you and set the pace, you got to back him up. You know, once you come out and establish respect, make him respect you right away. You have to do that right away to make Marvin Hagler respect you. If you don't do that, then you got problems. And Hearns can't do that, you don't think? I don't think so. I don't think Hearns uh, is going to work on Hagler because Hagler's been around. He got more experience, and he's too smart for that.